Hi, I'm Lindley and I run Body Liberation Photos. I thought I would give you today a little bit of a uh, of background about me, my work, my philosophy, my, my framework for my artwork, as well as some, uh, some information about everything I do. I'm joined today by one of my two cats, Tansy, who has decided that she's also going to be my audience today, <laughs> right before I hit go on the video. So, uh, so she's joining us today as well. Uh, I have a portrait and boudoir studio outside Seattle, Washington, but that is only a small portion of what I do. Uh, my work is both body positive and fat positive. And what that means is that when I say I'm body positive, I mean that all bodies are equally worthy, equally valid, equally beautiful. Uh, but when I also say that I'm fat positive, what I mean is that specifically fat bodies are uniquely beautiful uh, in their own right. They're not just shallow imitations of smaller bodies, that they have beauty all their own. So that's what I say when I talk about body positive and fat positive. Uh, my work also aligns with health at every size, which is a framework that says that anyone in any body um, can be healthy and can work towards health. Again, it's about that validity of all bodies. Um, so, so when I work with my photography clients, uh, I do... Uh, so when I work with my photography clients, I'm working from that framework that you don't need retouching or Photoshop or minimizing to be valid and worthy and beautiful in your own right. So I do work with clients here outside Seattle. Um, and occasionally I'll do travel sessions as well. I do portraits. Um, these are uh, these are usually portraits of individual people or couples um, where we really get vulnerable and explore what it looks like to exist in that body and to be beautiful in that body and to be worthy and valid in that body, um, even beyond the concepts of beautiful or ugly, just, just to be present and embodied as we exist today. Uh, I also do small business sessions where uh, occasionally it's not a small business, but usually it's a small business or a, an individual who comes to me and does, uh, we do some branding work and we get uh, culminating in doing photos for their business. Um, they usually use those both for both business and personal uses, which is really cool. It's nice to, uh, to see somebody who loves their business photos so much that they use them all over their personal accounts online as well. Um, I also do stock photos, and I'm going to come back and talk about that in a second. Uh, and then finally, I do fine art. Um, I've recently released a line of fine art prints, and they look like scooch, baby. Okay, so this is what my fine artwork looks like. I'm just going to hold this up so you can see it. And you can always see more of this on my site at bodyliberationphotos.com. And I do have those for sale. And... The my fine artwork does focus on large bodies, um, particularly very large bodies, and we explore what it looks like to normalize cellulite, to normalize fat rolls, to normalize bodies that aren't photoshopped, to normalize <laughs> boobs that go in different directions when you lay down. Like these are things that we don't see in the media, and so this is an exploration of what beauty looks like when it's not uh, an approved body and not a socially normal or acceptable body. Um, and then, so I wanted, I said I was going to come back to the stock photos and not everybody is familiar with what a stock photo is, but these are the photos that you find, um, of course I don't have anything offhand that has one on it in, within reach, but these are the photos that you find people use for their marketing and their social media, because unless you are a really big company like Microsoft that can say, I want photos today of uh, I, a 35 year old black man using a computer in a coffee shop. Microsoft has the power to hire a photographer and just set that up and make it happen. But most of us don't have that power. So, so stock photos are a way for people to go buy the photos that they need and other people can buy those photos as well. So you'll often see one popular photo used in lots of different places. Um, but people can go buy those photos that they need and sometimes get them for free on certain sites. Um, to fill in their marketing and their social media and have something to post on Instagram and have something to put text on top of for their their e-course or whatever. And, uh, and so that's what stock photographers do. Well, most stock photographers are working in the dominant parag paradigm of this is an acceptable body or these are the models that I am finding available. So these are the people I'm going to use. And what that results in is uh, a world in which everybody looks the same uh, in the media and in, in marketing and advertisements on commercials, um, in TV shows. 
um, we have this is the idea of what's beautiful and acceptable and so everybody looks the same. So what I'm doing is, is I'm producing stock photos that are wildly different, um, that are that are not done on t TV type sets. Um, big stock photo companies like Getty will use um, actual sets. So when you see stock photos of people in a hospital that looks weirdly clean and new, or in an office where it just looks totally untouched, like the, the conference table doesn't have any dents in it and no scuffs, it's because it's a TV set, not, a, um, not an actual real world situation. So I'm working in real world situations, I'm working with, with people off the street. Um, I use very few trained models. Um, most of the people that I work with are just like you and me. Uh, we don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but we move through the world in these bodies. So that is what I'm representing. Um, so I primarily work with, again, people in large bodies, people in very large bodies, um, LGBT plus folks, and people of color. And that's who I'm representing in my stock photos. Um, and so everything that I'm doing is kind of about this framework of body liberation. Um, it's not just, oh, we don't talk about diets here, it's that it's actively anti-diet. Um, because we know scientifically that diets don't work. And so, as a client, or as a model, or as someone who interacts with me, like, I'm not going to yell at you about your diet if you are still in, the, in a place where you feel like you need that in your life. But we don't discuss it here either. Because what we are focused on here is your body as it is today and the inherent worth and value and dignity of that body, whether or not you're able to see the beauty in it. So my job is to help you find that beauty, but also to give you and everyone who, uh, who is interacting, like if it's a group, if it's a group activity, if it's a workshop, if it's, uh, like I do plus size clothing swaps here at my home. Um, in, in any of those environments, I'm giving you an environment where you don't have to worry about your body. You don't have to say, Oh gosh, maybe I shouldn't eat this donut that's out here. You can just be yourself. In my personal life, like I said, I live here outside Seattle. I'm from North Carolina uh, originally. So I grew up in North Carolina, so I'm a little bit Southern. Uh, there are two things I can cook, sweet tea and sweet potato casserole, and that's about it. Um, I lived outside Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia for about 10 years, and we moved here about five years ago. Uh, I live here with my husband and uh, two cats, one of whom is still prowling around my feet as I speak. and. Uh, Let's see, what else about me? Um, I love to garden. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but I really enjoy it. And I've discovered that the secret of gardening is that there are always more plants at the nursery. So I just don't even worry about it. I just sort of get what makes me happy and try to take care of it and learn as I go. Um, I really like cute things, like my Squishables, uh, Squishables coffee cup here. Um, Squishables is the brand and I ha they have a lot of super cute uh, stuffed animals. and. Being in Seattle, it's dark a lot, um, and so I have become a coffee aficionado since I moved here. And uh, my my drug of choice is cold brew coffee that I make super lazily by chucking it in the fridge overnight, uh, and then straining the grounds out. Let's see. I really enjoy really enjoy nature photography. If you're in my spheres, you're gonna see a lot of nature photos too because that also makes me really happy. Um, I read a lot. Um, I'm learning to knit. Um, I really like playing video games. I'm a big Final Fantasy XIV player. Um, and again, I'm not super great at it skill-wise, but I really enjoy it. And so I do what makes me happy. Um, I have a huge washi tape collection. Uh, it's a little embarrassing. Uh, but people see it and they go, ooh, so that's fun. Um, I use my washi tape when I'm journaling or doing uh, arts and crafts type work. I live with two chronic illnesses. Uh, I have a diagnosed anxiety disorder that I am working through. It makes me really nervous on video, as you can usually tell, but I'm working through that as well. Um, I also have some issues with the tendons in my arms and the muscles in a, in a way that occasionally um, limits my online activity a bit. And I talk about these things, not to make you feel sorry for me, but because if we don't talk about the things that we uh, encounter in our bodies and the things that we struggle with, particularly um, as online business owners, we can become unapproachable and we can become uh, we can become goals, like hashtag goals for people <laughs> in a way that's kind of unhealthy. So I talk about my anxiety and I talk about, you know, oh, I just, I can't, I can't discuss things in, in my group today because, because my arms hurt and I need to go rest them and I need to go do my, my physical therapy stuff. Um, and so that's why I talk about those things. So it's okay when you come work with me, it's okay to be like, hey, I have this mobility limitation. I have... You know, I have a migraine today, I need to reschedule. I 
you know, I need you to be, I have bad knees, I have a bad back, we need to watch that. Part of, you know, part of that saying all bodies are valid and all bodies are worthy is saying, this is how your body is interacting with the world today. It's okay to respect that. And so I do work a lot with folks who have mobility limitations or they can only stand for so long or, or you know, I don't put them on their knees when we're doing boudoir because that hurts. Um, and, and I encourage people to sort of set boundaries with me and with others that they interact with about their bodies. So you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest. Um, if you want to friend me personally on Facebook, cool, there's only one of me. I'm easy to find. Um, but you can find me on Instagram at Body Liberation with Lindley, Facebook as Body Liberation with Lindley Ashline, uh, Twitter I think I'm at Lindley Ashline. I'm not very active on Twitter, but you're welcome to follow me there. On YouTube as Lindley Ashline, and on Pinterest as Lindley so Ashline. So the last thing I want to tell you about my life and the work that I do is about the Body Love Box. This is my monthly body positive subscription box that I have been running at the time of this taping for exactly a year. And I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of the difference it's making in people's lives. So I thought I would do a super quick uh, one minute unboxing for you, show you what a sample box looks like, and tell you about uh, the framework behind this, the philosophy, how it works. Uh, so subscription boxes, how they work is you give, give me or whoever is running the subscription box uh, money every month and in return you get something awesome in the mail. And the way the Body Love work, Box works in particular is that you pay the month before you get the box. So for example, if you paid um, between, if, if you, either your subscription is renewing or you're starting a subscription. Um, if you pay for the first time between November 1st and November 30th, you would get a box in the first week of December. So it can be slightly counterintuitive in the way that it works because it does mean that you have to you pay a little bit, usually a few weeks before you get the box. Um, but every box looks more or less like this. We have my artist friend Clover designed the box logo and I can't actually tell if you can see it sharply, but hopefully you can. Um, it is a fat unicorn and I'm so proud and so happy with this design because it's not just a unicorn. I mean, I love cute things. But it's not just a unicorn, it's a fat unicorn, like with a visible belly. And it's been really interesting how people react to this. Um, I have this logo on my show banner that I take to events um, because I sell merchandise at events as well. And uh, at mostly body positive events of various kinds here in the Pacific Northwest. And sometimes people will see it and they'll like make a really wide circle around my booth um, because it freaks them out. Sometimes people go, oh my gosh, that unicorn looks like me. <laughs> and they come over and they interact and it's really cool. So, so that is my fat unicorn logo. Um, there's one of those on every box. And every box has a different theme. Um, so this one happens to be, this one is from back in April. So the way, the, the context of the box change every month. Um, you can still get this one at thebodylovebox.com, this specific uh, theme of the box. Um, but every month is a mystery until it comes out. So this one is a spoiler, but that's because it's, it's an older box. So I'm going to spoil it for you. But this is the fatter in real life box. So every box has a theme. Um, sometimes it's something, something kind of silly. There was, uh, we've had a donut mess with me box where everything was kind of donut themed. Um, sometimes it's a little more serious. Um, in November 2019, we had one called This Is My Body um, that was uh, more of a deeper, deeper exploration of body image. Um, but every box has, has contents in it that are handmade uh, or hand designed by independent small business people who are also, uh, who identify as fat or identify as plus size. Um, we also um, try to get folks uh, who are people of color to get their work in the box. Um, people with chronic illnesses, uh, people from the LGBT plus community, all of these things uh, are the centerpiece of the box. What that also means is that I'm paying everybody that I can, that I can. Sometimes I do fill in with factory made items. So occasionally you're going to get something that, that was mass produced, um, depending on, you know, depending on the, the finances of any given box. But the centerpiece is always the handmade items. And what that means is that I'm paying everybody a living wage. I don't, I don't do what most subscription boxes do. Um, what most subscription boxes, how they operate, how they make a living, how they make money, is they go to businesses, quite often small businesses or smaller businesses, and they say, hey, give me a sample size of your perfume, for example, for free. You'll get lots of exposure and everybody will come buy your work. 
Well, in the meantime, that small business is out hundreds of dollars for all those perfumes and they may or may not get any business. And I just feel like that's not a way, that's not a living wage for the creators. That's not a way to be a truly ethical in your business. So I don't haggle with artists and I pay them a living wage for their work. So what a living wage means is that every box is actively supporting artists, uh, but we're not used to paying living wages for what we buy. It, and I'm speaking from a US centric standpoint, I'm in the United States, um, the majority of the people that subscribe to the box are in the United States or, uh, or in Europe. And uh, we are used to buying products that are made by people who are not being um, paid what we would consider a living wage. Uh, which is enough to provide for the basic necessities of life without assistance. And so each box, given that it's a living wage, um, when you buy this, when you receive this, everything that you get in here is fairly made, um, except for a few, a few things here and there. And so you're not going to get as much in this box, to be totally honest, as you, uh, as you might get for the same amount of money for like a mainstream subscription box. Hi, Tansy. So, because you're paying a living wage for what you get. So, it might not seem like you're getting as much for your money, but that's because your money is going to fairly pay people. Um, so everything that you do get is, uh, is ethically produced. And so I thought I would show you, this is literally a random box. I just picked it out of the, my overstock this morning when, it, when I walked upstairs. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna scoot a little closer. So I'm going to show you what's in this random box, which is the fatter in real life box. And the reason I pulled a random one is so that it, it it's really representative of here's an average month. So every box has a card that tells you what is in that month's box. As a guide, it shows you all the artists. Um, since this box came out last April, these have actually been improved. So on the back, this used to have an advertisement. I'm not going to show you that because now... Uh, each of these postcards has a really cool quote on the back that you can hang up on your wall. People put them on the Burlington boards or on their, like their office doors. And, uh, and so it's now a dual purpose. It shows you what's in here, but it's also a piece of artwork, the newer ones. And the newer ones also have tissue paper in them, uh, but, uh, but the experience is basically the same. So there's some crinkle paper in here to protect. Um, this can be, uh, depending on where you live, this can be recycled or composted. Um, I encourage you to do so. And getting rid of some of the crinkle paper. Um, this is in here for a reason. Occasionally people do ask. Um, the crinkle paper is in there because it literally protects everything else that's in there. <laughs> so, so it's in there for a good reason, I promise, not just to be attractive. Um, in this one, the first thing we have, there's a nice gift box. And you can see that this isn't staged because it's kind of wrapped around because that's what happens when, when things get, when boxes get moved around. But this is the Venus of Willendorf necklace. This is a body love box exclusive. And is it gonna focus so you can see? Yeah, there we go. So you can see the beautiful silver plated necklace and chain. Um, I created these, so I put, I'll put these together myself. I did not do the casting work on the, on the Venus of Willendorf. I did order those, but I constructed all the necklaces. And these are meant to be fully accessible necklaces. Um, it's an extra long chain. You can see, so you could just put it over your head if you wanted. You could also, there's also, it's hard to see here, but there's a magnetic clasp. So you can just pop it together or not. And then there's also a traditional lobster claw clasp that's kind of like so, so that you can, uh, you can put it on and take it off any way you want to try to make it completely accessible so that everybody can wear it. Also in this particular box, we have, there is a cute peach butt pen and there's, there's crinkle paper stuck to it, but <laughs> there it was, it was under the pen itself. There is a peach butt pen from Starry Crowns artwork. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see these small things, but it is a cute, it's a peach that's also a butt, like a, a round, a round booty with, uh, with a cute little um, bikini bottoms on. From Tatiana Gill, this is the Positive Space sticker. This is one of the coolest boundary stickers I have ever seen. Um, it lets you it lets you create boundaries for your space. It says this is a positive space. No homophobia, no transphobia, no biphobia, no femphobia, no fatphobia, no xenophobia, ableism, classism, racism, disrespect, or shaming. You will be asked to leave. 
and this is such a cool you can put it on your water bottle you can put it on your front door um just such a cool way to say what you will and won't tolerate in your spaces there is a fatter in real life sticker from famous fat positive artist rochelle cat eyes this is not focusing sorry but you can see all this on the website there is a sticker from Kimberly Dark that says celebrate body diversity. There is a fun piece of boob positive art that has all different kinds of breasts depicted on it uh, from a custom lingerie brand in Impish Lee. There is from writer and artist Rachel Avalar, who's actually local to me. There is a zine called Dear Fatty. Um, this will probably make you cry. Read it when you have some tissues handy. Um, it is a set of beautiful letters. And then the last item in this particular box is a set of resources that I put together. And which one was this? My favorite self-care resources. Now, since you can still get this overstock box on the website, and when I ship these, I do add some extra things in um, because these aren't quite as... as um, Full of goodies as the newer boxes because the newer boxes include uh, a bookmark with a body positive quote every month. Um, they include, like I said, on the back of the insert that tells you what's in that month's box. There is a um, uh, there's no cool art, so a uh, cool quote. So it's now like a body positive art card that you can hang up. And uh, in every box there is an artist interview every month. There's a featured artist, and so we do an artist interview. And what was what was the other thing? Oh, I'm now putting body liberation journals in each month's box. So every month you get a paper, uh, a paper insert that is both a journaling activity and a self-portrait activity, a selfie activity. Um, and so in each box we try to include something that is like some fun things, some serious things, some resources, um, and also something that you can sit down and do to further your body acceptance journey every month. So that's what the Body Love Box is all about. It's this, this really magical combination, hence the unicorn, of body acceptance resources plus you know things you can do plus just fun stuff plus supporting marginalized artists artists in marginalized bodies fat of color lgbt plus um supporting them in their artwork and in their businesses so that they can continue making art uh, because that's vital uh, for artists to be supported so that they can keep creating these inspirational things for all of us uh, so you can find the body love box at thebodylovebox.com and on various social media, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, yeah, I don't have a separate YouTube yet, but all these, uh, all these places you can find us at The Body Love Box. Uh, when I bought the domain, somebody else already had bodylovebox.com, but it was like a dead site. There wasn't anything on it, um, but I was not able to get that domain. So everything is The Body Love Box. You had to put the V in front of it to get to this one. So that is what The Body Love Box is all about. Uh, please follow us, please, uh, please interact, please help support artists, and I look forward to sending you one of these every <laughs> That didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> this is my favorite photo bomber. Her name is Tansy. She's a very grouchy cat, but she's pretty. And she knows it. <clears throat> you know better. Hey, 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 not so much with a bitey. She's pretty, but she's mean.